A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, sometimes I feel a little out of place because almost every other company that's here is probably a multi-billion dollar company, and I'm a startup company, so it's, it's sometimes a little overwhelming. Having said that, uh, I think I'd like to can just take spend the next few minutes uh, talking a little bit about the challenges of safety and how some of those risk controls can be uh, looked at from a perspective of particularly small companies, because I think it's the, the reason why I, why I even formed this company was because when I was talking to one of the ministers in Singapore, he was expressing the problem that, you know, all you multinationals take care of the large companies, but, you know, you need to address small companies because that's where the majority of the employment is. And it was based on a motivation from him that I said, let me embark on something. How can we use technology to solve problems for small companies? So that's the whole idea. So I'm going to spend, it's going to be actually a little bit of a demo come lecture. So I'll do this very quickly. So this is all about enhancing the effectiveness of risk controls across the value chain. Uh, how do we describe the state of business today? If there's one word to describe it, any thoughts? A lot of people use the term VUCA. Do you know what VUCA means? VUCA really stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, which is a term that came from the military, but basically it represents the state of business where things are changing so dramatically that it's just a little too impossible. And by the way, this term is not a new term. It came way before this came, right? So it's been there for a very long time. So how do businesses deal with this VUCA conditions? There are very simple techniques, a very simple way. The most simple way to do that is just hoping that everything goes okay. But that doesn't work. So in reality, what do you need to do? In reality, you essentially need to cut down costs. And what happens? It all starts with the manpower. And we've seen this across regions, across sectors. There is a cost cutting going on irrespective of which sector you're in. So, but we do need to stay in business. We can't shut down business just because we've had to get rid of manpower. So what do we do? We work with a bunch of contractors and subcontractors. It's a value chain process where it's a second tier and fourth tier. This is how work gets done. But that's also aided by the fact that today, really, there are people available on tap. You have people who are available for virtually CEO, CXO, CFO. They're all available. Or a contract safety officer, contract doctor, plumber, you name it, you get them. Now, that's great, but that's got some unintended consequences. Unintended, but not unforeseen, because these are bound to happen. Those are essentially violations, you know, maybe a safety lapse somewhere here and there. It could be a contractual oversight, financial oversight. You just name it, there are multiple things that happen. In, if I were to just summarize it in one way, it's just a vast increase in the quantum of risks, whether it be brand, EHS, or operational, or financial. I'm obviously not going to talk about all of these things because this is an EHS conference, so I'm going to focus purely on the EHS risks. So let's talk about EHS risks. Again, I'm probably preaching to the car here because you're all experts in health and safety, but it all starts with hazards, you know, which gets converted into a risk event, which converts into a consequence. Now, there's a probability associated with the hazard, and there's a severity associated with the consequence, and the combination of that is what we call risk. And then, you know, it's, it's hazards converting into a risk, converting into a consequence. Ideally, these hazards can be multiple hazards. Uh, in, a, in, an, in an ideal situation, you just want to eliminate all these things and then the problem doesn't happen. But it doesn't work that way, right? You just can't do that. So what's the next best thing that you can do? Essentially, you put in place controls. And these are all nothing but risk controls, and managing those things is risk management. So it's all about managing the risks, as probably many people have already spoken about. So, Effectiveness of these controls that we spoke about in this previous slide here really depends on three E's, which is engineering, education, and enforcement. Uh, again, some people alluded to this in the morning session. And for, if you can do an engineering control and set everything right, I think that's brilliant. We don't need anything else. But, so I'm not going to talk about engineering because that's the best control you can have, but I'm going to talk a little bit about education and enforcement and see how these can be, what are some of those risk controls and how do we manage those well. So let's talk about education first. So what do we say when we say education? Yeah, we've got rigorous training program. I'm, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure every company here is going to say that. But then I question this. I'm going to challenge whether are we really doing training or are we actually making people learn it? Because putting a person in a class and ticking off and saying he's attended 40 hours of training this year doesn't necessarily mean he's trained, or rather he's learned it. I think there's a lot of compliance orientation here, and we tend to equate amount of time spent with training as learning, which is not true. Because there are, especially in today's generation, two fundamental challenges when it comes to learning. What are they? Attention and retention. I'm actually surprised so many of you are paying attention now because they say that the distraction is so heavy these days. I mean, the quantum and nature of distraction has changed dramatically in the last 100 years. What used to be outside of the workplace has now gradually shifted into our pockets, and we are constantly distracted. So the distraction is so heavy that we're always 
they say the attention span of a human being is now less than that of a goldfish. A goldfish is at 10 seconds and we are at 8 seconds. That's published report from Microsoft. So that's one of the fundamental problems. The second one is retention. So when it comes to retention, we always talk about the learning curve when we talk about training and other things. But associated with every training or every learning is also a forgetting which we conveniently forget. It's just a question of time. I mean, if you look at this, if you reach the peak of your learning, if you can practice your learning almost immediately, that's brilliant. But how often do we get a chance to practice it immediately? So it's just a question of time before which it drifts off. And especially if you do a crash course, you're probably going to know nothing about that course maybe a week from now. And they say 50% of what you learn in a particular training session gets lost by the time you leave the hall. And 90% by day one and almost entirely by 30 days, unless you practice it or unless you do this so-called reactivation, which is periodically you know, triggering those neurons in your brain to remember and form those neural pathways. So if the doctors here would probably know this. This term is called neuroplasticity, where essentially you've got to create those new pathways in your brain so that that new learning takes over. Otherwise, that just remains somewhere. It's not knowledge that's gained. So you've got to create those new neural pathways. Otherwise, all the training, in my opinion, is, is not training, but it's a draining of resources because you've wasted time on training, but you've really not got that to be implemented. So I'm going to park this question here. So the first question, which I said, was about learning. So it's about how do you make overcome the learning challenges and make it more effective. The second one really is about enforcement. And when it comes to enforcement, we always talk about safety audits and inspections. But again, work is not what it used to be. 100 years ago, supervision meant you know, a supervisor sitting in front of his employees and monitoring what they did. But today, work is performed, like I said earlier on, by a second or third or a fourth year subcontractor who's somewhere spread out. So you really don't have the ability to do supervision. And when we say that we live in this world of cloud and big data and all that, I think we conveniently forget the fact that behind the cloud, there are multiple problems that we don't realize, that we don't have answers to. For example, are our learning interventions actually working? You know, are we really uh, have those risk controls that we have, are they actually in place? And have we kind of, do we know where are our vulnerable processes? You know, these are things which we are really flying blind with all of these areas. So this is what we asked ourselves when we started this organization. We said, what if we could really combine these two challenges of education and enforcement using technology and also use that as a way to drive up productivity? The solution itself is a very simple solution. We built in a curating platform through which you curate the knowledge, make it available to a dispersed workforce. From the knowledge, you essentially gather the data and you use the data to drive your improvements. I'm going to take just about three, four minutes to quickly demo how this would work in the, with an example from a small enterprise in Singapore, because this has been deployed with multiple small enterprises in Singapore. It's a small company which is in the construction sector. I'll just show you what we do there. Not getting the. Pretty here from AV. Okay, I'll skip and go directly to the application. So what happens is there is a curation platform through which the thing is curated, and subsequently, a person from the company would look at something which. They would look at an app. The bottom right, you see that. Then they log into the app and they log in. This is a small enterprise in Singapore. When they log into the app and they see their company name, and they log in, a person there would see, he would have to log in. This would be a supervisor or somebody in the company. He would see a module where he can very quickly go and see what are the modules that have been assigned to him. And for example, the site control is a risk control for lifting operations. It's about setting up a lorry crane. And then there are very simple steps as to what is it that he needs to do at that point of time. And once he starts it, then he has some very clear instructions. And by the way, this is in any language. It can be in any language, maybe pictorial in nature. Idea is to back this up with some kind of very quick information at that point of time. This is not about providing people a whole lot of information and this whole training program. But how do you give them that point of need information in visual form, in whatever language that he's comfortable with, so that he knows that you know, these are the few things that I need to do. And this is all information that's publicly available. We've got the Ministry of Manpower and the council there have developed a lot of guidelines. So we've essentially digitized specific content that's required at that point of time, made it available, and then telling people what can go wrong if you don't do this. And then this is the important piece, because this is where the evidence piece comes in. Because with the curation platform, you can also curate and say, tell me very quickly, what did you do and what did you do? To that? Did you, is the ground condition suitable? So take a picture of what you did there. So you can take a quick picture of that. You can upload all that stuff. And all this goes back into the cloud. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you the cloud. I'm showing you the screen there, but you can just submit it. 
This information goes back into the cloud. I'll see if I can get this out. I'm not getting the, I need to curse, use the browser. Maybe I should put a display. Where is the present? Display. <laughs> Duplicate. Yeah. Okay. So this is the curation platform. Let me show you how that works in this particular case. So you have a, a knowledge, for example, this was that particular thing where you had a site operations. At insight operations, you had a, a risk controls for lifting operations, under lift control for lifting operations. You had this thing which said setting up the lorry crane. So these icons here is where you really go and curate the knowledge. So what it does is when a person opens it up, a contractor or whatever, they are very simple icons where you can essentially drag and drop these icons from the left which is paragraph, et cetera, et cetera. Drag this and then curate the content. So I've just put this message here. And then you can go back and then look at set it, setting it up. And you can also curate things like you know, questionnaires or quizzes or where you want information to be coming, coming back to you. So this was the curation platform which I showed you on this thing. But then once that is done, you can also go back and look at you know, who did what. For example, now this module which I just completed, so you have risk controls for lifting operations. And if I go and look here, at the setting up of lorry crane, you will see that there have been 36 instances where this has happened. And if I drill down deeper, I know that the most recent session was held by this particular person whom I logged in as Ahmed. Sorry, this is an older session. But you, can, you would find that session logged in here, and you can go back and drill and find out at what time he did it, where was he when he did this, what was the answers, what did he upload, how much time did he take. So these are all very simple ways in which a small company can essentially understand what are those risks and get those risks get the risk control out. Because I think the existence of risk control systems and risk, risk control plans are fantastic. But the reality is, do they actually get implemented in practice? And do we surface them or do they remain, do those risk controls remain on file? That's the whole idea. How do you bring it out to the open so that the worker there doesn't have to be looking at a big risk control plan, but really looks at specific instances where you know, the specific thing that he needs to do that at that point of time is taken into account. So if I were to go back, what this platform really does is helps to assure quality manage risks and enhance productivity because you also get qualitative data in terms of how much time does it take for specific activities in specific locations. So going further, you can mine that granular data and from that granular data, you can get dashboards to do various things. Maybe it could be productivity, it could be relating to what, what is happening at various locations. So what are we doing through a small technology platform? We're essentially saying, we can provide knowledge when required, where required, in small bytes, and then at the same time manage conformity by way of managing the risks, getting real-time insights, and then driving, making smart decisions. So if I were to summarize very quickly, I think there is a need to relook at the way we look at learning and conformity in today's world. Because in an ideal world, you know, people learn, people practice, and then they attain mastery. But that's not what happens in the real world. Because in the real world, people learn, they go back to their old ways, there's no way to practice, so the forgetting curve takes over, so that mastery becomes elusive. So that's a big drain on resource, really. The question really is, how do you keep that knowledge alive? What do you do? How do you make that bridge wherein, essentially, you can use technology to keep that knowledge fresh? And this is where a platform like this, and I'm not saying this is the only one, a platform like this could potentially help you to essentially keep that knowledge alive so that you, before you go into the mastery phase, you know what you need to do. So you can obviously use it in other phases as well. So it's not just at the phase of uh, the forgetting curve, but you can use it in other phases as well. So lastly, why is this important? Because I think we all talk about artificial intelligence and everybody and everybody talks about how we are entering into the era of artificial intelligence. So I, I need to mention a word about the company's name, so which is, why, why are we here? Because we believe that in this era of artificial intelligence, we should not forget the individual. We've got to keep actually the individual at the center and make sure we enable the individual with necessary intelligence and intuition using technology. Because if, if anything, when we are talking about artificial intelligence, I think the need to make humans more intelligent is far more important. And that's precisely what we believe can be done with technology in a very simple way. And it's not limited to the large companies. It can be done with very, very small companies also. That's the whole idea. So that's it. So end of the day, what we are trying to do here is really through, through, a, through a learning and development, we want to kind of assure quality, manage risks, and help drive up productivity. That's our mission. Thank you.